What up guys, welcome back to the Bag of Tricks. Today we're gonna be learning the backflip. So up until this point, I've been kind of going in order in tricks from easiest to hardest, I guess. And the backflip's kind of out of order. I would not suggest learning it if all you can do on a jump is a 360, but at the same time, it's a super cool trick and I think a ton of people want to learn how to do it, so I figured I would give you a few tips. First things first, before you even think about doing a backflip on skis, you need to have them on lock on a trampoline. You need to be able to do them in your sleep on a trampoline and maybe even do them on the ground. You're going to be going upside down on this, so you have to be smart about it. Don't just fling your body and hope for the best. Skiing is a dangerous sport, and you don't need to make it any more dangerous by doing something you're not ready for. So have it down on a trampoline first. If you got it down on a trampoline and you're super comfortable in the air on skis, you can do 360s, 540s, other jump tricks, then you're probably ready to take it to snow. I would suggest finding either a warm day in the spring with soft snow, a powder day, or an airbag to learn this trick on for the first time. All three of these options are going to help you get over the fear and it's going to make it easier on your body if you happen to crash. So let's get into the trick. I find it easiest to backflip poppy jumps, bigger jumps, and maybe scarier, but it's definitely going to make it easier for you. This trick is all about commitment. If you don't commit to it, you're probably going to end up on your head or on your back or on your stomach or something else painful. You have to commit to this trick. If you're not ready mentally to commit to this trick, then don't even try it because it's just not going to end good. When you come into the jump, again, find a jump you're super comfortable with. If it's smaller, that's fine. If it's bigger, that's also fine. And again, try to get a day where the snow is soft and it's not going to be as painful. But when you come into the jump, as you can see here, you're going to want to be crouched and you're going to want to get your hands behind your back. This is going to give you a good pop off the lip as well as a good start to your flip. What I find useful is when you're backflipping a new jump for the first time is to kind of hit it straight air a few times and envision the amount of force you're going to have to throw the flip with. Some jumps may require less because they're super steep and super poppy. Some jumps may require more because they're not as poppy. Now when you hit the lip of the jump, you're going to want to get a good pop with your legs and then throw your entire upper body backwards. But make sure you get that pop with your legs first. This is going to prevent you from hitting the back of your head off the lip, which, I mean, just think about that. That's, that's just not going to feel good. So uh, get a good pop with your legs and then throw your entire upper body backwards in the motion of the flip. Depending on the jump, you may need to throw it harder or softer. Use the jump to your advantage. Don't fight it. If it's a poppy jump, use the steepness of the jump to get the flip around. It makes it a lot easier. I know sometimes I'll hit a poppy jump and throw it way too hard and over rotate. Just trust the jump, trust yourself, and throw that flip with the amount of power that you think is perfect. Once you initiate the flip off the lip, that rhymed pretty sweet, uh, you're going to want to get your head around instantly to spot that landing. This is going to allow you to gauge if you need to open up your body to slow down the flip or tuck your body even more to speed up the flip to get it around. You don't want to catch your tips of your skis on the landing, so make sure you over-rotate. Over-rotating is going to help you more than under-rotating, so get your head around and spot that landing. Again, this is where a bigger jump comes into play and makes it easier because it gives you more time to see the landing and see if you need to slow down the flip or speed up the flip. But spotting the landing is, in my opinion, the most important part of the flip. It makes it a lot less scary. Once you get your head around and spot that landing, all the fear is going to be wiped away and you're just going to be looking at that nice landing and that nice stomped landing you're about to have and impress everybody in the lift and make them go crazy. So once you spot the landing and get the head around, you're ready to, to put it down to your feet. Again, depending on how high you are or how far you need to go, uh, you may need to speed up the flip by tucking yourself, bringing your knees into your chest a little bit more, or just lay out the flip like you see right there to slow yourself down and get a nice flip and make sure you're landing perfectly on your feet. If you're learning a backflip on a smaller jump for the first time, you may not want to lay it out like I did there. That'll probably result in you catching your tips and under-rotating. 
but you want to flip more like you see here, more compact, get a quicker rotation around, and make sure you put that to your feet. So there you have it guys. For a backflip, you're going to want to spring it, load your knees, throw your entire body backwards, get a good pop, whip your head around, spot that landing, either tuck up or lay out to slow it down to put it to your feet, and then ride away. And remember, the number one most important part is to commit. There you go, guys. Hope you learn it. Hope you land it. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.